Hello everyone, this is Akang Suman here. Now we will do questions based on the epicyclic gear train. We all know what is epicyclic gear train. Apart from the rotation of the gear, if any gear axis is in rotation with the some other axis of the gear, then we call it as epicyclic gear train. Okay. So epicyclic gear trains, if you want to find out the degree of fit, this is basically the simple epicyclic gear train that is given in the question. If you want to calculate the degree of freedom, you will calculate, okay, you will get a two degree of freedom using the pushback equations. You can calculate the degree of freedom. So in the question, what is given first, we need to read the questions carefully. The sun and the planet gear system shown in figure. T A is equal to 36, T B is equal to 45. That is nothing but the teeth on gear A, teeth on the gear B. Okay. If arm rotate 150 RPM clockwise, uh, counterclockwise direction about the center of the gear A and while the gear A is fixed, you just have to calculate the speed of the B. Okay. Now I already told you how to draw the table. First you need to draw the table and then you can solve the questions. Because in the epicyclic gear train, the important thing is how to draw the table. So I am just uh, drawing the table that is motion and here it would be arm and here would be A and it would be B. Okay. It will not take uh, too much time as you are, uh, you, and you, are you, as you are perfect to making the table, it would, it would take less time. So do the lot of fractions, lot of practice questions. Okay. Initially you will take a time. Okay, it will take a more time to draw the table. You will, you have to see each and everything very carefully. But once you mastered to draw the table, it would take seconds. Okay, so here motions. In the motion, first time assuming that the arm is free, arm is fixed, arm is fixed, and a rotate, a rotate with x rpm x rpm i am assuming x rpm this is plus x rpm means x rpm in clock clockwise direction because i am assuming that the clockwise has plus sign and the minus sign representing as anti clockwise direction this is my assumption okay so here arm is fixed so it is having zero angular velocity and x we have assumed that the a rotate with x rpm that is plus x because in the diagram you can see A and B both are meeting here. So if A is in clockwise direction, B would be in anti-clockwise direction. So what? how can we calculate the speed of the B? You have to use the velocity ratio NB upon NA. That is TA upon TB. We know that these are inversely proportional to each other. So that is NB you can calculate. That is NA multiply TA upon TB. Okay. So this would be in anti-clockwise direction. So I'm taking minus sign minus, uh, minus x multiplied ta upon tv. Tv. Now in the second case, I'm writing here that arm is free. Okay. In the second case, we have to free the arm. If uh, because in the question. Because in the question arm is rotated with the 150 rpm that means arm is free to rotate okay but first we have to draw the table like that arm is fixed and a is rotated with the x rpm so that is a general uh, table you have to draw don't try to put the values direct values in this uh, table otherwise you will get a mistake so that is x plus y that is y minus you just have to add y in each of term minus uh, x multiplied t a upon t b now this is the complete table we have drawn now we will go to the given data what is given in the questions the gear is fixed gear is fixed means speed of the a is equal to 0 that means x plus y is equal to 0 what is the speed of the gear a that is x plus y is equal to 0 and we all know that another thing is given that arm rotate with 150 rpm counterclockwise that means y is equal to minus 150 rpm okay because we have assumed counterclockwise as negative sign so that is minus 150 so from here you can calculate the x value so that would comes out to be 
वन फिफ्टी आर पी एम प्लस वन फिफ्टी आर पी एम दैट मीन्स क्लॉक वाइज ओके सो दैट मीन्स अवर अवर एजम्पन इज राइट सो नाउ द एक्स प्लस वाई इज इक्वल टू एक्स इज इक्वल टू वन फिफ्टी आर पी एम दैट इज क्लॉक वाइज नाउ वी नीड टू कैलकुलेट द स्पीड ऑफ द बी दैट इज द क्वेश्चन कैलकुलेट द स्पीड ऑफ द गियर बी ओके सो वॉट इज द स्पीड ऑफ द गियर बी वाई माइनस एक्स टी ए अपॉन टी बी नाउ जस्ट पुट द वैल्यू वॉट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स दैट इज माइनस वन फिफ्टी माइनस एक्स वन फिफ्टी मल्टीप्लाई टी ए अपॉन टी बी वॉट इज टी ए थर्टी सिक्स इज गिवन एंड दैट इज फोर्टी फाइव You just have to calculate that is a uh, that is three sixty upon. You will get two seventy minus two seventy RPM. That would be our answer. But here minus sign is not uh, mentioned, so we have to see that what is the representing by minus sign. so here we all know that nb is equal to 270 rpm and minus sign minus sign representing the anti clockwise direction that is counter clockwise direction so according to the option option a would be the correct answer be careful about the directions because some of the students making a mistake in the sign conventions okay so everything in the ep cycle gear ten depends on the table that you have drawn so again and again i am saying that i have said this a lot of time that you have to master you have to practice a lot of questions and you have to draw the table okay in a general form don't try to put direct values on this uh, uh, table otherwise you will make any mistakes and somewhere and you will get the wrong answer and all wrong answer will also be in the options that is the main mistake that's a problem if you get the count uh, if you get the clockwise direction 270 rpm clockwise direction the uh, option will also be in the you can see uh, there will be option option c will be there okay so be careful about the answer you can also cross check again it would take uh, seconds 10 to 15 seconds to cross check to revise the solution of the question again but the but main thing is that this type of questions contain two marks basically two marks questions uh, uh, is there in the gate examinations Associated with the epicyclic gear train, so you have to practice the questions on the epicyclic gear train because in the gear and the gear train that is important ch chapter. It, this is important topic basically. So I already, I already explain you everything about the epicyclic gear train. I think there is nothing left to, that uh, I need to explain you because everything just depends on the practice of the questions. Whatever be the types of questions, possibility I I already told you. i will give you some more questions that were a little bit complicated okay don't worry it is not a simple and nor as complicated but i will give you some questions so that you are able to understand the complicated examples also complicated concept how to see the diagram if you if there is a diagram which is given for the gear if it's actually get in something some actually sometimes they will give you a complicated diagram complicated gear trains okay side view of the gear train so it would be a little bit complicated to solve so to understand the situation to understand the diagram properly because this is the diagram that you are showing that you are looking here that is a basically the front view of the gear train okay if i give the side view of the gear train it would be a little bit tough okay so i will solve the some more examples so don't worry about it just to do the practice questions that i already give you it is sufficient for you okay so i hope you will understand the solution of that question thank you